Throughout the years of the show, we've come across a lot of big bads. Whether these big bads were great big bads or just awful big bads, that's what I'm going to go over in this video. I've got a list of 14 of the biggest enemies that our group or groups have ever faced, whether that be a single person or an entire group of people. I'm counting down my favorites in terms of how great they were at doing their job. In this case, that's being the enemy of our characters. This is obviously a very subjective list, so let me know your ranking in the comments. And I'm not including every single villain that they came across in the show, because a lot of times there would be a villain that was in like one or two episodes, or they were around for a while, but they just didn't have that much of an impact. So if they're missing, you can just assume that they would be below the bottom of the list. So let's get on with the ranking. Coming in at last place, we have Jadis and the Trash People. I think they're supposed to be called like the Scavengers or something, but I will always refer to them as the Trash People because everything about this group just sucks. They live in a literal dump, they have the worst haircuts and hygiene of anybody in the apocalypse, and they talk like Kevin in that one episode of The Office. I waste time, say lot word when few word do trick. Yeah, they got the drop on Rick and the group in season 7, and then they betrayed him again in season 8, so I'll give them that, but I chalk that up to bad writing more than credit to the trash people. In second to last place, we have Don and the police officers from season 5. While season 5 is hailed as one of, if not the best season of the show, this entire plotline really drags it down for me. We spent two episodes with them, and particularly Beth, just for our group to get there, Beth to die, not to kill them, and never see them again. Sure, Don got what was coming to her, and these officers were very bad people in general, but this is easily the worst plotline of season 5, so that personally just doesn't make me think very highly of them as villains. Up next is Gregory. Perhaps the most annoying villain in the entirety of the show, Gregory constantly switches sides and goes against our group as often as one goes to the bathroom. As annoying as he is, I actually think he's a fairly well-written character. He stood on the shoulders of everybody around him in order to survive this long, and he was at least smart enough to gain a community to follow him for quite a while. Gregory reminds me of like a less interesting Saul Goodman, and maybe placing him this low on the list is a bit unfair, but it's my list, so whatever. Just outside the top 10 are the wolves from season 6. I remember all the build up to the wolves in season 5 with all the wolves not far signs, and they were built up to be this really big threat. While not exactly as big of a threat as they seemed like they were going to be, I always remember when they attacked Alexandria at the beginning of Season 6 while everybody else was away dealing with the Horde, and Carol had to go all Terminator on them. There was also this main wolf who I don't really think was a great character, if you've seen my episode analysis on No Way Out, then you already know that, so the wolves were basically a plot device to further our characters along, but they brought some really interesting plot lines with their attacks, so I'll give them credit for that. Our most recent villain comes in at number 9, and that's Pamela Milton. For a while, Pamela was actually alright, and she seemed like a pretty decent person. It wasn't until the final part of season 11 that she turned into an actual villain, and for that reason, her turn to the dark side seemed a bit half-baked to me. I don't think she was given nearly as much time to develop as was needed for a character like this, because even by the end I just didn't find her very menacing, even with her cool theme. Next on our tour of the Season 11 villains comes the Reapers. Now, when the Reapers were first introduced, they were super menacing and downright frightening. They cut through our group like butter and separated them with complete ease. Daryl having to go undercover with them was a storyline I actually really liked, and the idea of actual trained, like, basically military assassins in the apocalypse taking people out is really scary. But after their first two or three appearances, they turned into the same typical villains we've seen so many times in the show. Pope seemed like he was gonna be like a really great and smart villain, knowing that Daryl isn't really with them, and then that didn't happen, and he died doing barely anything noteworthy in the show. So for a few great scenes and a lot of potential, the Reapers come in at number 9. And rounding out the list of Season 11 villains, we have Lance Hornsby. Right from the very start, there was just something off about Lance. His descent into villainy and downright craziness seemed so much more believable than Pamela's did, and I was really hoping that in the final part of Season 11, Pamela was going to die and Lance was going to take over her place. 
Josh Hamilton delivered a really great performance as Lance, and I truly think that Lance could have been like a top three villain of the show if he had survived and taken over the Commonwealth. His death was very lackluster, and again, a really aggravating example of wasted potential. In the seventh spot, we have Joe and the Claimers. Seeing Daryl around these guys gave a real sense of like anxiety because he never really knew what they were gonna do. The Claimers are what happens when the worst kind of humans survive and band together during the apocalypse. They reduce the world to its simplest terms by having a claiming system and leave a trail of sorrow wherever they go. Their storyline was built up very well and the ending of their storyline is the single moment that changed Rick Grimes forever, so you gotta hand that to them. They were perhaps the darkest villains in the show given how they were portrayed in their final scene, and I think they made a really great impact without overstaying their welcome. After the group dealt with Joe and the Claimers, they ran into Gareth and the Termites, and coincidentally, that's exactly their order on this list. Another one of the darkest groups of villains on this list, Gareth and the Termites were built up to have this sanctuary for all, just to ruthlessly and emotionlessly kill and eat their victims. We also got a great deal of backstory on Gareth, saying how this place used to be exactly as advertised, but needed to change to keep with the current times of the world. It's actually a very tragic story about who Gareth and these people needed to turn into in order to survive in this world, and their scene with Bob was incredibly disturbing. Again, another group that served their purpose and didn't overstay their welcome, so they land at spot number six. Up next, a lot of people might be surprised by this one, but it's Simon. I actually think that Simon is a pretty great character and all around one of the best aspects of season eight. He's got a really great story arc with being Negan's right hand man to wanting to be the one in charge, and he makes some very impactful decisions over the course of the season. And that's more than a lot of characters get to do when they're in the show for multiple seasons. He didn't overstay his welcome and added a lot to the season that isn't thought to be the greatest, and Stephen Ogg was fantastic as always. I know there's a lot of other like side villains in the Savior's arc, and they just aren't really that interesting to me, so wrap them in with Simon if you want to. In fourth place, we have Alpha, Beta, and the Whisperers. Some lists have Alpha and Beta ranked separately, but I don't really see any point in doing that, so they're here together at spot number four. If the Claimers reduced the world to its simplest terms, then the Whisperers advanced the world to its now simplest terms. I think the Whisperers were so unlike any of the other villains on this list because while they wanted to survive, they weren't holding on to the way the world used to be. They didn't want things to go back to how they were, they recognized the world for how it is and how it was going to stay, so they adapted to it. Not only is their mindset incredibly unique, but the time that they came into the show was perfect. Rick had just recently left, so there needed to be a new and unique group of bad guys to keep people interested, and the Whisperers did exactly that. In our bronze spot, we have Shane Walsh. Might be a controversial one to all kinds of people for either having him this low, this high, or even on the list at all. But in terms of the overall storylines of the first two seasons, Shane certainly took on the antagonistic role. Obviously more in season two than season one, but Shane served exactly the purpose that he needed to, prepare this group for what they were going to face on the road ahead. There's a lot of people that say that Shane wasn't really a villain and he was just ahead of the curve, and I am one of those people, but in terms of where it came in the story, Shane was the villain, and a damn good one at that. In the silver spot, we have Negan. I could go on for minutes about how great both a villain and a character Negan is, and I have if you want to check out that video, and while his introduction also came with the downfall in viewership, I don't think that that's Negan's fault at all. Negan was certainly the most effective villain in terms of what he did to our group and to Rick Grimes. While he was funny at times, Negan also had a menacing side to him that made you realize he wasn't somebody to be taken lightly. Of course, Negan would go on to be a bit of an anti-hero, and he did overstay his welcome a bit in terms of being a villain, so he can't be number one. And the gold medal winner, the best villain in the show, is... Rick Grimes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Thrifty, you can't be serious. Rick is the hero, not the villain. And while I don't 100% agree with that, I am joking because the rightful winner of this list, and should be on everybody's list, is the governor. The governor had the exact right combination of everything I've said on this list. 
He was menacing, came in at the right time, didn't overstay his welcome, and changed our characters in a lot of different ways. Also, he had the greatest theme of any of the villains, so there's not much more I can say. The governor was the biggest and the greatest villain in the show. End of story. That's the list. I didn't add anything from Fear or World Beyond, and I didn't include the CRM because even though they took Rick, that makes them evil, we don't know a whole lot about them just yet. If there's any that I missed, let me know that down in the comments, and also give me your ranking of the villains. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like, and click right here to see my ranking of both the seasons and the communities, and if you're not already, you should subscribe, so that way I can see you in the next one. Yeah.